Good morning, and I hope everyone had a wonderful Christmas. With 2021 just about in our rearview mirrors, what lies ahead for our nation's economy and Michigan's business community in 2022? With an ongoing pandemic and partisan political politics still very much among us, planning of our state's premier Mackinac Policy Conference is full throttle ahead. What theme will guide their work? We'll find out. From Sandy Barua, President and CEO of the Detroit Regional Chamber, and Arne Tellum, Vice Chairman of the Detroit Pistons Basketball Franchise and Chair of the 2022 Mackinac Policy Conference. It's Sunday, December the 26th. I'm Chuck Stokes, and this is Spotlight. Sandy Barua, my old friend, good having you back on Spotlight. You're doing well? Chuck, thanks so much. We are doing great. Hope you and your family uh, are having a great holiday season and Happy New Year. We are and Happy New Year to you. Uh, the 2022 Mackinac Policy Conference, it's right around the corner. I know that as soon as one is over, you start planning for the next one, uh, but we're going into the calendar year for it. Uh, have you set the theme already? Yeah, our chair, Arne Tellum, who is a vice chair of uh, the, uh, the Pistons uh, and the Pistons Entertainment Group, uh, is our chair this year. And it's really exciting to work, uh, work with Arne and his team at the Pistons on this. And they've set the theme of the changing role of the business community in polarizing times, which I think is a fantastic theme, especially since we are a business conference. We're a business conference hosted by a business organization for primarily a business audience and to really have this year's conference really focused on how the business community's role has changed during the pandemic because of all the polar political polarization i think is an ideal time and an ideal theme well certainly uh sports and entertainment is big business brings in a whole boatload of money uh both for the players as well as the cities that they play in um but i can't remember a time when you've had a chair from that sector of the business community. But I think that is what you're saying. There is a changing role in terms of how economics is going and how cities and states are rebuilding themselves. And that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I mean, I think there's two ways of looking at it. One, you know, obviously, as you said, you know, professional sports is, is, is serious business uh, and it means a lot to local economic development uh, matters. Uh, but, you know, so they're a great representative of the business community. But also all businesses have been really forced to play a different role and kind of uh, react to different things that they've never been asked to before. I mean, the fact that businesses have been so engaged in things like, you know, telling people to manage mask up during the height of the pandemic, encouraging people to get vaccines, mm -hmm. trying to combat so much disinformation that is out there on the internet that their employees might be subject to, or even things like voting rights. You know, these are areas that businesses of all kinds have rarely, rarely waded into, but because of our changing political times, they've been forced to do so. And coming up on Spotlight, Sandy Barua on the importance of civility as we get ready to enter the 2022 midterm elections. We'll be right back. You all have been saying for not just recently, you've been saying it for years now about we have to have more civility. How are you going to keep that theme going in what will be a highly charged political year? Yeah, the great thing, and thank you, Chuck. And actually, you're a big part of that. I mean, you know, you, uh, you know, despite, you know, the fact that you're a journalist always going for the answer, you always do it in such a civil uh, and polite manner. And that is the same theme and ethos that we've had the, at the conference for years, which is that we want debate. We want people to express their views, but always, always, always with civility and respect. And we very, very rarely, if ever, have had a, a uh, like an uncivil, conversation up on that island, either it be on that main stage or all the side conversations that take place amongst the 1,500 business and political leaders that are there. We have that reputation. We're going to fight hard to, to maintain it. You and Wright Lassiter, who's the outgoing chair of the Mackinac Policy Conference, uh, had to navigate your way through this last policy conference 
in the backdrop of a pandemic that uh, no one can predict who would have thought we would still be in it. Uh, but you did it and you did it successfully and you got back to having an in-person conference. What did you learn from last year that you hope will serve you well as you enter into 2022 where we still have question marks? Well, certainly having the CEO of one of Michigan's, you know, premier health systems as your chair to work with Good to time. Uh, host uh, over a thousand people during a pandemic was, was, was just golden, right? But what Wright and I were able to do together is really kind of change key things about uh, the conference. One, we required vaccines uh, and we actually used the Clear app to ensure that people were, were vaccinated uh, before they were allowed in. We reduced the capacity. We used more outdoor spaces. We fundamentally changed a lot of things about the conference. That actually led to not only a very safe environment where you know all of our protocols worked incredibly well, but also the people who attended said, hey, this is actually better. We like this format uh, and the size better. So going forward, we're, we're going to kind of constrain, you know, uh, the, the audience just a little bit. So it's not quite such a zoo uh, as it has been over this last decade. For one week out of every year, Mackinac Island becomes kind of our home away from home. We care about that community. We care about those businesses. And we know that bringing a thousand plus you know, business and political leaders is good for their business and we're happy to support that. And we told people, you know, all throughout the 2021 conference, if it's not right for you this year, no problem. You know, you come back when you can. And we think that's the way businesses should operate. Do what you can to protect the public, but let the people decide. Coming up, we will talk to the other half of the leadership of this, Arne Tellum. He is the 2022 Mackinac Policy Conference Chair. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Joining me now is Arn Tellum. He is uh, the 2022 Mackinac Policy Conference Chair. That's not his day-to-day -day job, but for uh, start, starting in just about a week or so, it's going to probably feel like it's his day-to-day -day job. Arn, thanks for joining us today on Spotlight. You're doing okay? Doing great. Nice to be with you. It's certainly a pleasure. Uh, the 2022 Mackinac Policy Conference Chair uh, did right Lassiter give you any advice whatsoever before you go into this really busy year? <laughs> Actually, Wright is a very good friend and uh, uh, him passing the baton to me, given our relationship, our friendship and our partnership uh, that we have, that we've enjoyed over the last few years in building our Pistons Performance Center downtown. Uh, uh, we we're very close and it seems like a, a natural passing of the guard from Wright to me, but um, and I was happy to do it, obviously taking it from right. But his advice was uh, just what you said <laughs> becomes a, a, a quite an undertaking, uh, something that uh, I'm looking forward to. Uh, I love Detroit um, and uh, part of uh, the greatest you know, experience here has been making a difference and impact in this wonderful community and all the friends uh, we've made along the way. Probably the beauty of this conference is that it is so well organized by that chamber staff with the leadership of Sandy Barua, and it is a pecking order in terms of grooming the chair, getting them ready, um, and that I know you have been and will continue to work with a lot of the other CEOs to try to get what you hope will be sort of your vision, your mark on this policy conference coming up. Uh, what is, will that vision look like? What do you want to achieve? Well, from my background, which is professional sports, sports has been a great um, vehicle to bring communities together. Obviously, it starts with building teams and players together of all backgrounds. Uh, and in these challenging and um, disruptive, divisive times that we're you know, navigating, uh, a conference that is designed um, to bring us together, uh, to bring greater civility to our public discourse, to find ways that uh, businesses need to engage and uh, make a difference in our in our community uh, and make our communities better uh, and bring our communities together. Um, 
I think is very important. So uh, it'd be safe to say that you want to make sure that this has an economic development component to it, um, but it also has a social justice part um, that relates to it, as well as recreation, uh, which as you said, is indeed your business and has a huge impact on major cities uh, of all different sizes. Yes, and obviously it starts here at home in Detroit in this region and on our state. Um, but to me, it's, it's not just about policy. It's about obviously standing up for, you know, when should businesses engage and be involved in the political, uh, you know, life and climate uh, that's going on? When should we engage? When shouldn't we engage? What rights are so fundamental that we need to stand up on, like on certain social justice issues? such as voting and other things where businesses have stood up to, to protect voting rights uh, and speak out on the protection of voting rights and inclusion and bringing people together. Uh, I think there's certain things that we have to be engaged in. Um, we, you know, we ha sometimes you have to take sides uh, and uh, you can't stand by and just, you know, and let things happen. You have to, you know, speak your mind. These are challenging times for everyone, for government leaders, for business leaders, for civic leaders and finding common ways that we can work together and engage and uh, heal our communities, bring us together, um, uh, I think is more critical than ever. Sure. All right, let me read something to you that you wrote in uh, an op-ed column with the Detroit Free Press not terribly long ago, but I think it delves right into what you're talking about. You said in part, there are those that say athletes and leagues should remove themselves from the discussion of racial and social justice issues. I believe they should help lead it, just as Jackie Robinson did in 1947 by breaking baseball's color barrier, Muhammad Ali did in 1967 by refusing to fight in the Vietnam War, and Colin Kaepernick did in 2016 by kneeling and sacrificing his career to protest police brutality. Um, Athletes these days um, have, well, not just these days, they have a history of it, but I think maybe more so recently we've seen athletes speak out and become real catalysts beyond the profession that they do every day to make an impact on the cities that they live in and the nation. Well, athletes have a great, great platform, as do teams, um, and it's important that you use it, you know, and, uh, at the appropriate times uh, on the and on the, the, the those issues that are so important. Uh, you mentioned Jackie Robinson. I think Jackie Robinson has one of the most important quotes that have uh, impacted my life. A life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. Uh, that quote has <laughs> I, I grew up living by. Uh, and uh, and I think that's part of the ethos that, you know, the athletes today carry. So whether it's LeBron James, and all the other great athletes that you mentioned, uh, I think they're living it and embodied that quote that Jackie Robinson said over 50 years ago. And, uh, and, and for teams, I think it's also important that we have great platforms to be able to engage in our community and, and make a difference. And uh, we have to lead. Uh, and I think it's important for us to lead because sports embodies bringing communities together. That's what we stand for. We inspire people, hopefully for collective action and we bring communities together all the time. Uh, that's what that's what our purpose is. Uh, obviously, we want to win basketball games too. That helps bringing communities together. But um, uh, but clearly, that's the 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 I think the goal here uh, of what you just said is what you know. There are certain issues where we have to speak out, and that was one of them that I did on. All right, we need to take a real quick little pause for a cause. We want to come right back. If you hang on just a second, we'll ask you just a couple more questions that. Uh, uh, about what you're going to be doing in the coming weeks ahead, but also a little look back at Arn Tellum. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Uh, when we're not in a pandemic and everything is filled up to the rafters, um, and entertainment is huge and perhaps more so now because people need some sort of outlet after all this pandemic. Um, when you sit down with these other CEOs 
from other professions, how do you make that argument to them and say, this is a vital economic tool along with everything else that we talk about at these policy conferences? I think you, you can just look at Detroit and uh, rather than hearing, <laughs> hearing my words, you can look at uh, Little Caesars Arena and Comerica Park and Ford Field. Uh, no other city, no other city in the United States has all their four major sports teams playing in the heart of downtown. Um, this is this is it's been sports has played a unique role in Detroit's revitalization uh, on bringing people downtown, bringing people to live. The ripple effects of having those teams down there is significant, way beyond just playing games down there. Um, and uh, I know when we were negotiating to move from Auburn Hills to uh, to downtown, um, I guess four or five years ago, uh, this was really an important part of the mayor's agenda was to bring us downtown, and uh, and we're happy to be there because to me to be to be playing downtown uh, was essential for us to be to connect with our community and our fans and our fan base um, and to have future fans uh, and. And as an extension of that, once you're there playing games, that's just a small part of it. Uh, it's how do you connect with the city? And, and so that's what we did. Uh, and that's what the other teams are doing so, you know, so well in the city is, is finding those um, you know, initiatives that you can make a difference and play a role in. So for us, it was finding, whether it's education, supporting after school programs, help mentoring for, for youth, give, if, you know, using our, our platform to make a difference to improve the lives of young people in Detroit, that's an extension of what, you know, we're trying to do as with the Pistons, and that's what the other sports teams are doing. Tom Gorris, uh, this shows not just the sports side of him, but there's also a civic engagement side of him that I trust is very important to his business acumen. I think when he bought the team, that was a huge part. He grew up in Flint. He still has very strong ties to Michigan uh, and to this, especially to the Detroit region uh, and wanting to make a difference here. And he views the team as a community asset. Uh, he's just a caretaker of. Uh, we want to do right by our community, be all engaged in the community. When I joined him a little over six years ago, those were the discussions we had. And that was the the, the reasons I ended up joining Tom when this mission was to, that he saw it with a much broader purpose than just, obviously, we want to win. There's no question we want to win. Uh, that's an important part of our job here. Uh, but it was the broader mission that, uh, that we could, that we had a deeper sense of purpose here was which to connect with our community, make a difference in our community, uh, be fully engaged in our community. Uh, that's the ethos of Tom and this organization. But we have a plan. We have Kate Cunningham. We're going to be adding more talent uh, this year uh, in the draft and in next year's free agency. We're on our way, whether it's rebuilding Detroit or whether it's rebuilding the Pistons on a smaller scale. It requires great patience and great care, and uh, it takes some time. Final question, Aaron Tellum. Uh, you grew up in Philadelphia. You became one of the most successful sports talent agents in the U.S., uh, you were you were the first person to represent Kobe Bryant and your roster of who you represented reads like a who's who of the basketball world. A lot of people thought you were crazy in 2016 when you left the Wasserman firm uh, to come do what you're now doing. Um, as you look back, was it worth the move and are you glad you made the move? I had a great run as a sports agent. Um, better than I ever dreamed of when I started out on my own and hung up my shingle uh, 30 plus years ago. Um, the, uh, th this was a chance to, as I just said in my, in, about with joining Tom, it was to do something that gave me a deeper sense of purpose. And at this stage of my life, to me, it was the right thing. And why I chose Detroit was I had always, I never thought I would leave California or I might go home to Philadelphia. But Detroit has a lot of similarities to Philadelphia, and that's one of the what was the thing that attracted me here, was that it was an underdog city, was facing great challenges. I was so moved by what people were doing here, uh, what what Tom was trying to do here, what Dan Gilbert was doing here, and other leaders, uh, that it was inspiring to me to come here 
and, and, and use the Pistons as a platform so that we could play a difference and make an impact in Detroit. And, uh, and the last six years have been among the most rewarding and fulfilling for myself, for my wife. Uh, we love this community. We've made great friends here. Uh, we're not there yet <laughs> uh, in achieving all our goals, uh, but uh, we're well on our way. And the, the partnerships and friendships we've made here, because you can't do it alone, uh, have been so meaningful. Uh, you mentioned earlier about my friendship and part, our partnership with Henry Ford Health System. That's one of the, you know, the, the anchors of what we've done here uh, with the Pistons. That's a wonderful partnership, and we're looking to do more with them in the community. We just opened an arena with Wayne State University. So that partnership is very important. Another anchor institution is the leading public university in the city of Detroit with a great history. So we're very proud of that and that partnership. And even on the, uh, with all this, the other civic organizations that we join, whether it's, you know, City Year or Say Detroit and all the many others, uh, they've been really uh, meaningful and we know they're making a great impact. We just honored Dave Bing, the former mayor of Detroit, who was one of our greatest players, but he also has a mentoring program that we're very happy and proud to be part of and support. So there's so many things, Focus Hope, Forgotten Harvest, I could list all of our partnierships, but I don't want to bore, I don't want to bore you or the, or the, or the viewers, but no, we're, we're doing a lot, we're going to do a lot more. And that's really what is so invigorating to me um, and so exciting about our future. And, uh, and the role we play in Detroit. It's an important one. We're excited about it. And it, and that's what led me to, you know, taking on this position with the Detroit Chamber. I have so much respect for what the Chamber does in Detroit uh, and its leader, Sandy Brew, and, and they have a great, a fantastic team. And uh, I'm really excited about uh, working with them this year and making this, you know, the best possible, you know, policy conference. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping it does lead to building relationships, which is what as, as an Asian, that's what I did was make, you know, build relationships and partnerships. And I'm hoping this leads to better dialogue and bringing our communities together and finding ways we can work together uh, in these challenging times and, and continue to build and make and improve our communities. Well, Aaron Tellum, uh, best of luck to all that you're doing uh, with the Pistons and that organization, uh, but also best of luck as chair of the 2022 Mackinac Policy Conference. I'm sure we're gonna talk a lot more in the weeks and months to come. Uh, Happy New Year to you and your family, and uh, we'll stay in touch. All right, no, thank you very much, appreciate it. Thanks to Sandy and Arne for being my guests. From all of us here at Channel 7, have a happy and safe New Year. I'm Chuck Stokes, we'll be back next year to begin our 57th season of Newsmakers in the Spotlight. Have a great week.